Acts chapter 16. We'll begin reading verse 16. And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel, possessed with a spirit of divination, met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good spirit in the house of God tonight. Thank you for your people having a desire to come and worship you. Thank you for the good testimony. Thank you for God that cares. A God that's not a God of wood and stone that seeth not nor heareth not, but you're the true and living God, and you're touched with the feeling of our infirmities. You bid us to boldly come to the throne of grace, uh, Lord, in time of need, whether it's uh, 7 in the morning, 2 in the morning, or at noontime. Lord, you're always open to hear our prayers, and we bless you, Lord. And I pray for the next few minutes you'd use this unworthy vessel. I pray that you'd open our minds and our hearts to truth. I pray that you'd speak, God, and you'd touch people's lives. We certainly pray if there be any amongst us tonight unsaved, lost without the Lord, tonight would be the night of their salvation. And Father, we certainly pray for the saints of God. You'd enlighten their minds. Lord, you'd illuminate the truth to them. And God, we pray we'd hide the word of God in our hearts that we might not sin against thee. Bless now. We'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. I know we live in a day and age where we think we've arrived. We live in the information age, and we live in a day and age where we're going at light speed all the time, and it's foreign to our thinking to think that people are possessed with the devil. There's a lot of people that have the mindset that that was just in Bible times. And that uh, as soon as uh, the Lord and the apostles went off the scene, that uh, nobody's possessed by the devil anymore. Well, friend, uh, you wait till we get to heaven. You're going to find out a lot of these mass shootings and a lot of this uh, heinous stuff that's going on in this wicked world that we live in. It's all because the people who have done these things uh, have been possessed by the sorry, no good devil. Well, I want you to notice a few things about the scriptures here. I want you to notice, first of all, the one who's possessed. Look in verse 16 again. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us. Uh, can I say that the Bible said that it was a certain damsel. Anytime you find in the scripture uh, where it says a certain man or a certain woman or in this case a certain damsel, you mark it down, it happened for certain. Mm -hmm. And this is a certain damsel who is possessed by a devil. She has a spirit of divination. Uh, she had a spirit where she could uh, tell fortunes or tell people's events in her life. Uh, by the way, uh, that's uh, popular again today where you can uh, uh, call 1-800, get a hold of a devil, and they'll tell you your horoscope. They'll tell you your, your future. I see ads on the TV all the time. Uh, Boy, I, I was amazed at how much they knew about me. Uh, and uh, uh, listen, uh, just because you see it advertised uh, and just because the preacher don't preach on it every week, uh, it's wrong to get your fortune told. Uh, it's wrong to go to somebody of the devil to try and find out the future. Uh, you want to know about the future, uh, get in the Bible. I, I've done read the end of the book and know how it ends. We win, hallelujah. What a blessing. Uh, but there's a lot of people want to know what's going to happen in their life. Why don't you talk to Jesus about it? Why don't you find the will of God for your life? Uh, and don't go to the devil for the devil's uh, mess to try and uh, help you. And by the way, it's not real difficult. Uh, the Church of Scientology does the same thing. They ask certain questions that they're listening for you to react in certain ways. And how you react to these little simple questions, uh, they'll give you general answers, and you think, boy, that really applies to me, huh? Hmm? They can listen if you've got a twang in your voice and know you're from the South. 
It's not real tough. And by the way, the devil does know the Lord's crowd. I'm reminded by that one that said, uh, 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 Jesus we know and Paul we know. Who are you? The devil knows if you belong to the Lord or not. And here's a good test in your life. If he's not bothering you, either number one, you don't belong to the Lord or he's not worried about you. We see the possessed. Notice, if you will, the purpose for this spirit of divination in this certain damsel. Again, in verse 16, it said, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. Her purpose uh, in this whole uh, instance, this whole account of Scripture, uh, uh, the reason uh, she has made it into this uh, 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 particular account is the fact she was known uh, and her masters that controlled her and owned her made a good living off of her. Hmm? And uh, we see the purpose. Now notice the perniciousness. Uh, notice how she is full of mockery. In verse 17, we find that the Bible said that the same followed Paul and us uh, and cried, saying, these men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Now, can I say, nothing she said was wrong. That's right, Brother Jordan, it's her tone. She's making a mockery of it. These men are the servants of the Most High God, and they show us the way of salvation. These men are the servants. She sounds like a parrot. She's mocking them. Can I say that she, in what she's doing, again, what she's saying is true. But it's detrimental to what Paul and those that were with him were there to do. Can I say it's not only detrimental, it was dis divisive. She was not saying this so that God would get glory, so that people would come to God She's saying these things to deter people away from God. Can I say the devil always seeks to divide. The Holy Ghost always seeks to unite. <laughs> and can I say it was deafening. The whole time Paul's trying to witness and trying to teach and try to preach, he's mocking off at this and saying this and saying this, and it got to the point he couldn't even concentrate on what he was trying to say because her voice was deafening. Can I say that the sorry no good devil even in a church service like us can nudge somebody to say something out of time and it take away from what God's doing and can I say the devil can move in service in so much that even while the preacher's preaching he can't concentrate on what he's supposed to say because the devil is absolutely trying to take people's attention away can I say Wednesday night, had we not had a guest missionary here, we would have never got to preaching. There was such a bad spirit in here, I'd have just closed in prayer and we would have went to the house. It was horrible. I couldn't even give announcements. Notice, if you will, the pestilent. Look at verse 18. And this, she did, and this did she many days, but Paul being grieved. It was grievous what she was doing. Can I say Wednesday night it was grievous for me to be up here and trying to direct the service. Mm -hmm. And can I say, notice the parting in verse 18. But Paul being grieved turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour I want to preach for just a few minutes tonight on this thought I want to preach on the vexing of the devil the devil if allowed will vex every service he doesn't want people to get help from the word of God he doesn't want sinners to get under conviction and trust Christ as Savior 
He doesn't want the people of God uh, to receive the message, to receive the blessing of the Lord. Uh, he wants to vex. Uh, he wants to give an odd spirit. Uh, he wants to keep people from worshiping. Uh, he wants to keep people from getting victory. Uh, wants to keep people from getting help. Uh, he wants to vex, 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 and he'll use anybody or anything he can to do it. Sometimes even children of God can be used of the devil to hurt a service. So let me give you some things on the vexing of the devil. Can I say, first of all, the devil attacks prayer. Look, if you will, in verse 16 again. Look what the Bible says. And it came to pass as we went to prayer. That's when this damsel showed up full of the devil. You've heard me say it on many occasions. Uh, how many times have you got down to pray? You got down to talk to God? Got down to bring your petitions before the Lord? Got down to thank the Lord? Got down to tell the Lord you loved Him? Uh, got down to just talk and spend some time with Jesus? Uh, and in the midst of your prayer, uh, get the most wicked, evil thought run through your mind. Uh, or get, uh, or your mind all of a sudden uh, uh, gets thinking about what you got to do tomorrow or, or whatever uh, I want to tell you the devil hates it when the children of God get down to pray uh, can I say uh, prayer is where the power comes from uh, prayer is what connects heaven to earth uh, prayer is where we get totally dependent on God uh, throw up our hands and let God know it's out of our control uh, but in so doing we uh, throw ourselves on the mercy of God uh, who has all power uh, and it causes God to move in our direction uh, it causes God to do what we cannot do for ourselves. Uh, and the devil knows uh, revival don't come without prayer. Uh, the devil knows uh, 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 the blessing uh, in the service and the power of God falling doesn't come without prayer. Uh, uh, the devil knows uh, you'll not get that peace, Miss Jackie, uh, uh, if he can stop your prayer to heaven. Uh, hey, uh, the devil knows that prayer uh, is our connection to Almighty God. God, uh, and if he can vex anything, he'll vex your prayer life. I promise you this. Make up your mind you're going to pray every morning, every afternoon, and every night. At a certain time, say, I'm not going to let anything detract me from prayer. And watch and see how much the devil fights that and see how busy you get around them times. Amen. And I say the devil attacks prayer. You attack your prayer life, you'll attack my prayer life. And let me just help you something. You got to be very careful when you get in your prayer closet. I hope you got a prayer closet. I hope you got some place you can get along with God. I know there's some people like to come and go down to Rock Altar and pray. Pray. That's a great place to pray. Anywhere you can get a hold of God's an altar. It's a place where you can uh, uh, touch heaven. It's a wonderful place. But listen, you better be careful praying out loud. The devil's not omniscient. He's not all-knowing. But you start praying out loud saying, God, I love you, but you know this thing bothers me and this thing's uh, hindering me and God, will you deliver this thing from me? Not only is God listening, so is the devil. Mm -hmm. The devil don't know anything till you and I tell him. Mm -hmm. And he'll attack your prayer life. He wants to hinder you from ever talking to God. And if he can, he will. He will. Can I say this? He not only attacks your prayer life, he attacks your pathway. Look in verse 17. Look what the Bible says. The Bible said, The same followed Paul and us. Can I say, Wherever Paul went, so does demon. Whatever pathway, whatever course in life you are living, when you're on your job, when you're at school, uh, 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 when you're around the house, uh, 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 when you're going to, uh, to witness, uh, anything you do, uh, 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 you got to watch out because that sorry, no good devil might just be in your pathway. Hmm. He wants to attack you, and he wants to hinder you from ever doing anything right. Hmm. Uh, you're on the job. He wants to put somebody next to you that's foul and filthy and vile that'll vex you. Hmm? I don't know about you. Uh, just sometimes 
you're just living life. All of a sudden, somebody will come into contact with you, and they're filthy, and they're vile, and they're sorry, and, and what it does is it vexes your spirit. And if you have to work by them every day, guess what? It won't be long. If you don't stay on your knees, you'll be taking part of their filthy jokes. You'll be listening to their conversation. All of a sudden, if you're not careful, you'll be talking like they are. Listen, I, I love the folks that go out on, on Monday night, go out passing out tracks, and we go out in the neighborhoods, and we stir up a bunch of stuff, as, as I always say. But, you know, really, for the most part, in the last 24 years, we've had very few people actually call and complain. Had a few, but very few. Uh, it amazes me the last couple of weeks, we've had a couple of atheists tear up the tracks and mail them back. That, that, that boggles me but I was in the office now whether or not you understand this my office is in church my co-workers the Lord that's the only one I, I'm, I'm here with uh, hopefully now there are times brother brother Ray and some of the men are out here mowing or brother Ray's doing some work but 99% of the time when I'm here I'm here by myself well I saw we had some voicemails on the telephone so I hit the voicemail and I'm listening I've always got somebody wanting to sell us something there's always somebody asking for money or us to pay their light bill that's always one there but I got the most vile filthy words I haven't heard brother Josh since I was in locker rooms and we're going back 40 years I'm talking about filthy disgusting vile message on that uh, answering machine because we left a track on his door of course there was no caller id and of course he didn't give me his name or his number he just uh, chose to call me all kinds of things that uh, i ain't heard in a long time can i say that did not cause me to want to say well praise the lord that caused me to want to wring somebody's neck you know what i'm saying and if i would have acted it on that the devil would have had his way I'm telling you, he'll attack your pathway. When you're not looking, when you're trying to live, I was in church. Uh, I not only had my Bible open, I had 14 more on the shelf behind me. Uh, I had uh, 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 great writings from men of yesteryear all around me. Uh, I was uh, where I was supposed to be, uh, and uh, the sorry, no good devil in the middle of my day decided uh, 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 I needed to hear some of the most vile, filthy. That's what he'll do. Uh, he'll get in your pathway. Uh, he'll try to obstruct you. Uh, from just walking a Christian walk. Uh, he'll attack your pathway. Hmm? You know I'm telling you the truth. Uh, you go to the store, and all of a sudden somebody will say something or something will vex you. I'm telling you, he's a vexing devil. And he wants to keep God's people down. He does not want you and I to live in victory. He does not want you and I to live uh, 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 praising the Lord and encouraged and so we can edify somebody else. Uh, he wants us down under his thumb, vexing our lives, uh, so when people see us, they don't see anything different than the world and they don't desire the Lord in their life because it looks like he's not doing anything in our life. The devil wants to keep you down, wants to keep you discouraged. Wants to keep your nerves tore up. Wants to vex you to where you yourself are doubting your salvation. To where you yourself uh, don't uh, 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 have any word of praise out in this sorry no good world. Where to be the light of the world. Where to be the salt of the earth. Uh, where to be such an example that when they see us, uh, they know they've come into the presence of somebody that knows the Lord and they should desire to have what we have. But can I say, sometimes Christians have such a foul spirits. Christians themselves are so down and out. How many times have I imitated Eeyore? That's what Christians look. Thanks for noticing, preacher. It's a blessing to be here. Or Droopy. I'm so happy, so very happy. Well, tell your face. Uh, but can I say, that's what the devil wants to do. He wants you discouraged and distraught. He's a vexing devil. I won't go into it, but I'm going to. 
There was a time, Brother Ray, Miss Pam can testify this, Miss Tamming testify this, Miss Annette can testify this. There was a time when we was down in Owenton, there was a family in that church, and I'm convinced, Brother Ray, they was full of the devil. By their own testimonies, they had real problems. But, uh, Brother Ron, if I named the family, you'd probably know them. They shouldn't even been in the church, Brother Chad. They'd already been uh, churched and dismissed from two other churches, and the Bible tells us in the book of Thessalonica uh, uh, that after the second admonition, you're not to receive them into the household of faith. They should have never been allowed to be members of that church, but there they were. Caused problems, caused problems, caused problems. Well, the bottom line is they had some offenses against them that could have been charged and, and served jail time. And we just called them on the carpet because they wouldn't get right with God, had to dismiss them. Their two adult sons stood in the congregation and cussed me in the church house while we were churching their family. Uh, I, I can be honest with you, I had a Stephen experience that night. The Lord overshadowed me. I didn't hear a thing they said um, because that Doug Foster was a whole lot younger than this Doug Foster, huh? But can I say, the Lord blessed, so I didn't act out of character. We dismissed them, and even though I didn't hear that, my wife heard it. Jordan heard it as a, as a young child, heard their daddy, their husband getting cussed in the sanctuary. But that family kept coming to church even though we churched them and dismissed them from the membership, even though... We instructed we were not to grant to them the right hand of fellowship, even though I let the, uh, the ushers know when we took up an offering, you didn't even go buy them, you didn't take their money. We, did, we treated them as if they weren't even there because that's what the Bible tells us, to mark them and avoid them. Well, you ask Brother Ray, we'd be fellowshipping, having a good time. They'd walk into the church house, and it was like the devil himself walked in. There'd be so much vexation of spirit that you couldn't even say amen in the service. And I want to tell you something. That's what the devil wants to do every service. He wants to vex the service so people don't get help. He wants to vex in your life so you don't have any help. Not only does he attack prayer and attack your pathway, he attacks preaching. Look at verse 20. By the way, if you have noticed, I'm giving you everything right out of the Bible here. Verse 20, it says, and this is after Paul commanded this spirit to come out of this woman. Verse 20 says, uh, uh, and brought them to the magistrate, the men that uh, owned her, that profited from her, and brought them to the magistrate, saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Here it is, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Uh, all Paul was doing was preaching and teaching the Word of God. Uh, but can I say, uh, 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 the first thing the devil uh, will, uh, put in these men's mind after Paul uh, uh, commands the demon to come out of that woman, he attacks preaching, attacks teaching. Uh, can I say the devil always attacks preaching? Uh, before you get to the parking lot, if you're not careful, he'll cause you to doubt uh, what we're preaching on tonight. He'll say, well, there's really not people walking around full of the devil. Uh, Hogwash, go to the mall on Friday night. You'll see a whole mall full of them, huh? Can I say those that are getting involved in the homeless ministry, what a blessing, but you're going to find there's a lot of people out there homeless that are full of the devil. Mm. Can I say the devil always wants people to harm themselves and afflict themselves. And a lot of those homeless people are there afflicting themselves. It is not their nature nor their character. It's the sorry, no good devil that is inside of them uh, that causes them to beg for money so they can get another high, so they can get drunk again, uh, to constantly keep themselves under subjection to the power of the devil and his wiles. And can I say he always attacks preaching? Always, always has. Did not God tell Adam and Eve that they were not to eat uh, of the tree of the, good, of the knowledge of good and evil? And yet the devil said, ah, oh, that's not really what God meant. He said, he's just afraid you're going to become as gods, knowing good and evil. Made it sound so good. 
There's a lot of people say, well, Brother Doug, he's just, he's just preaching. It don't really mean anything. The devil will absolutely cause you to doubt all kinds of things or attack the man of God. Man of God's preaching, it don't matter if the man of God preaches two hours. The devil will tell you, oh, he preaches too long, or he preaches too short, or he's too bold, or he's not bold enough. or he, He's constantly attacking the man of God. He's constantly attacking the preaching of the Word of God. He don't want you to know that Bible. You know the last message the devil wanted me to preach on tonight? This one. Hmm? He doesn't want you to know he's not running around in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork. He can be transformed into an angel of light. Preached a message years ago on being in God's garden but not being planted there. Can I say there are people sitting in church houses all across America that the devil put there. God didn't put them there. And every time the Lord's wanting to bless, uh, the sheep follow, but the crowd of the devil, they butt. Sheep follow goats butt. I've seen it. Well, we need to do this. But preacher, that's going to cost some money. Well, our father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He can afford it. But preacher, that, that may upset somebody. But preacher, you didn't get Clint's approval on it. You know, that's what goats do. They butt. And the devil plants people in churches all across. Well, they smile. They look good. They seem so friendly. Uh, but all you've got to do is get to preaching a little bit close to where they live. It'll reveal who they are. I told this story not long ago, but it's true. We had this couple that came years ago. And they came, and she had a real sweet spirit about her, and he was a little different, but they came. They wanted to join the church. And talking with them, Brother Clint, uh, he had never been scripturally baptized. So he's going to have to scripturally baptize them. And it, 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 we had a, 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 it was in December, and we had about eight to baptize, and he was one of them. Well, we found out that the heater wasn't working in the baptistry. Now listen, thanks be unto God, my granddaddy broke ice and went out and baptized in the creek, in the river, you know, when it was, you know, ice all around and all that. And I'd been willing to because uh, when we baptized Rod, the heater worked extra good. It was about 120 in there. I put my foot in it and it blistered immediately. Uh, they was running getting cold water to put in it. But uh, 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 really, I wasn't looking too forward to getting in cold water, but I would do it, you know. I would survive. Uh, uh, but I, I reached all eight of them except him. And I, I give him the option. If you, if you want to be baptized, we'll baptize you. If not, we'll postpone it till we get the heater fixed. And then we'll have the baptism. And then everybody wanted to wait. But I couldn't get a hold of this guy. So I postponed it. Well, we was having men's prayer night, Saturday night prayer night that, uh, at that time uh, at 9 o'clock. And I was uh, uh, away that Saturday or something, meeting with somebody that Saturday or something. I wasn't here. Brother Larry was here. Brother Larry conducted it. And that guy come in acting like a rattlesnake, spitting and spewing, having a fit because I canceled the baptism. Well, Brother Larry called me. And uh, I I'll never forget this. I was sitting in our... In our, in our great room, I was sitting there in the corner, had all the lights off, and I just asked the Lord. I said, Lord, what is up with this guy? And Brother Ron, he didn't speak with an audible voice, but God spoke to my heart just as clear as, as I'm talking to you. The Lord said, he's a wolf. That's what he said, baby doll. He said he was a wolf. He was. So the next morning, I met with Brother Larry, we said, and I, I told Brother Larry, I said, when that fella gets here, bring him down to my office. Well, that fella came, and he wouldn't even walk in the, into the vestibule and walk down the hallway. He walked down the sidewalk outside my office, came in that side door down there. And he came in and sat down, and, and he was still fuming a little bit. And I stopped, and I said, well, the Lord told me what the deal is. I said, the Lord told me, you're a devil. I called him a devil. Miss Rhonda, you know he didn't argue with me. He didn't bat an eye. It was like he knew it all along. And he said, well, me and my family's going to move back to California. I said, I think that would be a good idea. Are you listening? To, hey, the devil plants people in churches too. He doesn't like preaching. 
Listen, he don't mind you hearing the truth. He's going to do everything in his power to keep you from accepting it and walking in truth. Hmm. This demon right here is telling the truth. But doing it in such a way that made it a mockery. I'm going somewhere. Hang with me. Can I say the devil attacks perpetually? Look at verse number 18. And this did she many days. She didn't just show up and do this one time. She did it many days. How many is many days? Too many. Paul had his fill of it. She did it many days. I remind you in Matthew chapter number 4 that the devil tempted Jesus in the wilderness. And can I say, if the devil's not afraid to tempt the darling son of God, do you think he's afraid of you and I? Uh, and the Bible says after he tempted the Lord three times, uh, the Lord uh, rebuked him all three times with the word of God. He said, as it is written, and God uh, quoted the scripture to him, uh, and the Bible said that the devil left him for a season. That meant he's going to come back and tempt the Lord again. Uh, and if he tempted the Lord, he'll tempt you. Uh, he's a perpetual devil. He does not get in a hurry. Mm. He walketh about seeking whom he may devour. But listen, friend. The Bible says, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. But it doesn't mean he won't come back again. He tempts you perpetually, especially if he knows your weakness. Uh, Brother Aiden, whatever weakness you may have, the devil will try to capitalize on that, and he'll pound you with that. He won't pound you with what bothers Trevor. He's going to pound you, and he's going to pound you. And you resist him, you come to church, you get in the altar, you try to be spiritual, go to all them camps, try to get help from God, and the devil will flee you until you get to school next week. Hmm. he'll look for an opportunity and when you're not expecting it he'll show up again because he wants to keep you down he don't like it you got some help this, this summer he don't like it that you got some victory this summer and he'll let you ride that way for a little while but when you're not expecting it look out he'll show up he vexes and attacks perpetually huh that's one that's going to be one of the beauties of heaven. Revelation 22, 3 says, And there is no more curse. Why? Because the devil's been thrown off into the lake of fire. Amen. What a blessing. We're going to a land where we'll never have to deal with him again. Let me give you this and I'll be done. This is the most important part of the message. I'm going to tell you how, what the devil uses. Can I say, first of all, the devil uses shallow people weak-minded people that word shallow means superficial it means having little depth it means heartless can I say uh, people that don't care about other people they're a good candidate for the devil to use even saved people if they don't have a heart for God the devil will use them people that can be saved but they're not deeply grounded in the scriptures. That's who the devil will use. How many times have I asked if the Lord's burning something on your heart and you want to brag on Jesus, brag on Jesus, and then somebody like Miss Jack tonight with tears in her eyes uh, will brag and give a testimony unto the Lord. Uh, I'm thinking about last week when Brother Ron gave, got up and God used him uh, 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 to give a testimony what was on his heart. Uh, and I can go around and name folks uh, that under the burden of the Lord will stand up and testify to God's glory. Uh, testify to God's grace uh, testify that God saved them what God's done in their life uh, and uh, have for lack of better terms juice on it uh, that blesses people uh, that encourages people uh, that gives hope to people uh, and all of a sudden somebody was shallow shallow in their mind shallow in depthness of the word of God shallow because they're really heartless to what's going on it's no longer about the Lord, no longer about edifying people. 
It's now about them. And they'll stand up and their testimony is always, I, 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 me, 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 something of that effect. And it doesn't have any God on it and it kills the service. Friday night at camp meeting, Terrell Hopkins should have never gotten behind the pulpit. The Lord was blessing. I want to tell you Travis Parker's message on bringing glory to God was wonderful. Folks were rejoicing. Folks were worshiping. God was a blessing. There was movement all over the sanctuary. Uh, 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 folks got to testifying and bragging on God. Uh, I, I mean, the wind is blowing. I'm sitting back trying to discern, God, what we do here, uh, what we do next. Uh, Brother Terrell done put his Bible up. Uh, he knew he wasn't going to be preaching. God was a blessing. Uh, and all of a sudden, somebody began to ramble and grieve the Holy Ghost. I no longer could discern the will of God because there was vexation of spirit. I knew nothing better than to call the man of God up and maybe he could get direction. And Brother Terrell told me after, he said, Brother Doug, I was not, I'd already put my Bible up. I did not know what to do at that point, so I just do the only, did the only thing I knew to do, and that was just to uh, deliver what had been on my heart. But you see, the devil uses shallow people let me help you with something when we come into the sanctuary of God it's never about you and it's never about me it's always about Jesus and you can say everything true but don't mean God's in it she's telling the truth but she's of the devil being used by the devil to grieve the man of God and there are people I've watched them and I preached one time on liberty is not a license. Just because I give you liberty to say something doesn't mean you have a license to say something. Even preached not too long ago on 1 Corinthians 14. Not every one of the preachers in here can preach at the, uh, in a service. Uh, not all the singers can have a song. Uh, not everybody can stand and testify. It's all confusion. Uh, things have to be done decent and in order. Uh, and it's always in order to follow the Spirit of God, my dear friends. But there are people who are shallow. And all of a sudden, Xander testified, it blesses people. Brother Peter testified, it blesses people. Brother Joshua testified, it blesses people. And they start seeing people getting blessed. Well, I've got something to add wrong. There's nothing you've got that I need to hear. What I need is what God is birthing in somebody's heart. Hmm? When I open up the floor, it's not a license for you to say something because you're here. I've heard people say, well, everybody ought to praise the Lord. Yeah, in due season. It might not be due season for you. I know the rocks will cry out if we don't praise the Lord. But can I say, in the service of the Lord, when we're in the sanctuary, the Spirit of God has control. And when we supersede Him, He closes it down. Mm. I've seen it happen. Mm. I've seen it happen many a time. Just because you have liberty to say something don't mean it's God's will. And I always tell, when they're making it up as they're talking, you may think you're fooling people. You're not fooling me. I know if the Holy Ghost is, uh, is using you or not. Or if you take liberty to straighten everybody else out, that's not your job. That's the pastor or the preacher's job. Use the Word of God to help people to see the error of their ways. That's not your job. Hmm? Can I say, if it's testimony time, it's your job to brag on Jesus. If He tells you to. Hmm? Now, I appreciate when I have talked along these lines. We have some people who are super sensitive. I'm not picking on anybody, but I'm going to pick on you. She's so afraid to say anything out of order. Sometimes God wants her to and she won't until she's so broken and she's weeping she can't help it. I like it when it's that way. But I appreciate her being so super sensitive she don't want to miss God that she won't rather than somebody saying, boy, I hope he asked for testimonies tonight. And by the way, we got others that are super sensitive. Miss Brandy's that way too. We got others. We got some, Brother Josh. They're not sensitive at all. I won't, 
call anybody out, but can I say, when we ask for testimonies, that's not asking for prayer request time. Hmm? Uh -uh. When we want prayer request time, we'll get prayer. And if you ever got a prayer request, hit me before service. I'll be glad to tell everybody to pray for it. But when we ask for testimonies, I want to hear about your corns. I don't want to hear about how you have to go to the, the, the doctor to have something removed. or all. I, I don't want to hear about all that stuff. We want to hear about Jesus. Uh, can I say, when we ask for testimonies, um, I didn't ask you to sing a song. I don't know how many times we'll be having a good testimony service and somebody say, Preacher, can I sing a song? I don't know, can you? That's what I want to say, but can't say that. You know, and being a gentleman, I'll, I'll let them, but it always kills the spirit. Hmm? Because the devil uses shallow people. Well, now that I got your attention, he also uses seared people. That word seared means scorched. Their fur got rubbed the wrong way. Listen, I've been preaching almost 37 years. There's been a time or two I've ruffled some fur. Didn't mean to, but the Holy Ghost tells me what to preach, and I preach it, and there's some people don't like it. Hmm? They don't like it because it gets too close. And they get all bent out of shape. Can I say that word uh, uh, seared also means somebody's bitter? Can I say somebody comes in in a bitter, foul spirit, it affects the service? Hmm? It also means having an angry spirit. Can I say you should never come to church when you're angry? And by the way, the devil tries to make you angry before you get to church. That's why he put a roundabout out here. That's why uh, 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 you could lay out your clothes the night before. You can have everything in order to come to church the next morning. You get up and it seems like all hell shows up in your house. And uh, all of a sudden, kids are fussing at mom and dad. Mom and dad are fussing at kids. They get in the car. Mom starts fussing at dad. Dad starts fussing at mom. Uh, and by the time they get to church, they're in such a foul spirit, it carries on into worship. You know what would be good for you before you come into church? Go by the rock altar before you come in here. Hmm? But there are some people, it's more than just getting angry at the house. They're angry angry because they didn't get their way in a business meeting. They're angry because they didn't get recognized. They're angry because they didn't get to testify. They're angry because I just called them shallow. They're angry because they didn't get to sing. They're angry because they didn't get to preach. They're angry, they're angry, they're angry. You know what the Bible says about people who are seared? 1 Timothy 4, 2, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. When somebody has a seared conscience, they have convinced themselves they're right no matter what, and everybody else, including the Bible, is wrong. I heard a man who was a deacon in an independent fundamental Baptist church say this. I heard it. He said, I don't care what the Bible says, I believe this. If you don't care what the Bible says, you're a knucklehead. Mm. And the Spirit of God is not using you. But can I say that's the kind of people the devil wants to use? People that have a seared conscience, that's angry, that's bitter, that complains. Mm -mm. You don't believe that? Go study the children of Israel once they were delivered from Egypt. How many times they murmured against Moses, murmured against the Lord. What did it cost them? It cost them 40 years walking in the wilderness until they all died out. You know why some of you don't have any victory? All you do is murmur and complain. Huh? Well, the preacher let the youth choir sing three songs this week. He didn't let the adult choir sing three songs last week. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, the preacher's introductions are too long. Well, talk to Thad about that. Those are all these Thaddeus introductions, huh? Well, the preacher, he, he preached too short today. We got out too early. Or we never get to the restaurant by noon. Well, if you want to do that, go join a Methodist church. They'll have you there in plenty of time. But if you want something that's real, deal with your spirit. And get it right with the Lord. The devil uses seared people, uses shallow people. 
Can I say he uses stubborn people? People that are prideful, that are unyielding. I've seen it. I've seen people know they was wrong, pointed out they was wrong, and sit there with their arms crossed, and they don't care. That family that I told you that we had uh, dismissed from the membership down there in Owenton, they kept coming for months. Why? Because they were stubborn, prideful, unyielding. Hmm? It's a sad, sad state when you care more about you than you do the work of God. But the devil uses stubborn people, unyielding people. I want to tell you something. If the Spirit of God tells me I'm wrong, I want to get broken before God and ask God to forgive me. I told my Sunday school class today, if my pastor would have ever called me into the office and told me that I had a foul spirit or I was wrong, it would have broke my heart. I'd have got right with him. I'd have got right with the Lord. I'd have got right with the church, and I would have hugged his neck and thanked him for telling me that I was wrong. Nowadays, you can tell and point out to people they're wrong. It don't matter. Hmm? Why? Because they're instruments in the devil's hand, right where the devil wants them. Hmm? Can I say the devil uses what I titled as slidden people or backslidden people? And by the way, you don't have to be in a far country to back, be backslidden. You can be sitting on a church pew and be as cold and far from God. And the devil uses that. Now notice those four things the devil uses. And you can be saved and the devil use you. But there's only one person the devil possesses. And that's sinful people. Huh? You can be used to the devil, not possessed by the devil, but you can't be saved and be possessed by the devil. Because the devil cannot abide where the Holy Ghost dwells. Hmm. But the devil sure can mess with people and use people to his advantage. I said all that to say this. After a great camp meeting, after great youth meetings where our kids got help, after some movement and some growth, the devil's doing everything he can to vex our church. Amen. Whether or not he succeeded, succeeds is up to you and I. Again, draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. Resist the devil, he'll flee from you. And whether or not we let the devil have free course is whether or not we let him have free course in our own hearts and lives. The reason God had me preach this message tonight is so that we draw a line in the sand and say, no more. We're not going to allow the devil to vex around here anymore. And he may show up my pathway tomorrow, but I'm still going to cling to the Lord. He may try his best to disrupt us. He may try to disrupt our services. He may try to disrupt the preaching. He may try. Don't let him have course in your life. When you get to listening to the devil over the Lord, you're in trouble. And there are people who do it. There are people, before you get to your car, you're going to have a negative spirit, a negative attitude. You know where that came from? Not the Holy Ghost. Hmm. The best way is when you start feeling negative, when you start feeling like uh, you want to talk about somebody or you start wanting to tear down the church, or you, want to, you need to realize that's of the devil. You need to get on your knees before God and ask God to help you with that. Ask God to forgive you of any uh, wrongful spirit you had, but also ask God to help you where you don't follow that path. By the way, him putting thoughts in your head doesn't make you sinful. But when you act on them, you are sinful. Hmm? Don't let the devil use you. And I'm going to try the, with the Lord's help, by the Lord's grace. I don't want him to use me. I want to see Jesus continue to bless and continue to help folks. And God can't bless when we allow the devil to vex. So God help us. You know one thing the devil hates? I'm trying to quit, but he won't let me. So if you're upset, take it up with the Lord. You know what the devil hates, Brother Josh? He hates a loving spirit. Brother Clint, he hates a forgiving spirit. Uh, Brother Aaron, he hates a, a spirit that seeks righteousness and seeks the Lord. He hates, Brother Ron, a spirit that wants truth. He hates all that stuff. So I'd rather have the devil mad at me, Brother Brian, than the Lord. Right. 
So I want to seek the things of the Lord. I want to have a loving spirit. I want to have a forgiving spirit. I want to have a spirit that's seeking the Lord. I want to have a right spirit. Right. And my dear friends, that happens when you stay on your knees and you stay in the Bible and you keep seeking the Lord. You'll have a right spirit. By the way, the old timers talking about when the devil puts them thoughts in your mind when you're praying. The old timers used to have this terminology, I prayed through. In other words, I didn't let the devil disrupt my prayer life. I kept praying until I knew heaven answered, uh, heaven heard and then heaven answered. huh? And my dear friends, when the devil gets to walking on your back, hey, stop, get a hold of the Lord, and let the Lord tell the devil there's no free rides in this world. Old Maze Jackson one time, he's an old preacher of yesteryear, had the power of God on him. He'd preached a meeting down in South Carolina somewhere and had a long drive home. Uh, and uh, 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 he got in the car and, and the devil kept telling him, uh, you did terrible this week, nobody got any help. Uh, you wasted your time, you took time away from your family, you took time away from your life, went down there and it was of no good. And he listened to that for about an hour up the road, uh, got to feel lower than uh, uh, a snake's belly and finally he had all he could take. Uh, he pulled over, uh, opened up the passenger door, said, devil, get out of here, there's no free rides. Uh, closed the door, started back up singing just as I am or amazing grace or something like that had a good ride all the way into the house uh, some of you are giving the devil a free ride it's time you, you, just, you just left him where he's at and just got closer to Jesus don't let the devil vex you don't let him hinder you don't let him lie to you just keep seeking the Lord some of you got lost loved ones and the devil say they'll never get saved. The devil's not the final authority on that. Keep praying for them. Keep being a light to them. The devil tell, tell you, oh, you, when you sing, nobody gets blessed. Don't listen to the sorry, no good devil. Uh, devil beat you down. Don't listen to him. Listen to the Lord. Let the Lord do a work in your heart. Don't let the devil vex you. Because if you open the door, he'll take your whole house. Don't let him vex you. Just keep seeking the Lord. If you do so, regardless of what the devil does, you'll be blessed. You'll have the joy of the Lord, and you'll find strength that you didn't know you had. Don't. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.